In this video, we're going to look at solving inequalities that contain quadratic expressions and also rational expressions. Starting here with 3x squared minus 17x plus 10 is greater than 0. Now, when it comes to normal looking quadratic inequalities, it's actually pretty simple. If you can just imagine that you've got your number line over here, and you've got a parabola, because that's what a quadratic is in terms of its shape, you have a parabola that does this. What you need to do is that you need to find out where does it hit the x-axis. Basically find the solutions. Okay. For this part up here, this is going to be where you are greater than zero. And even this part right here is going to be greater than zero. And anything that's below is going to be less than zero. So understand what the inequality is asking so that once you find your critical values you know what region or regions you're talking about. Since this one is looking for where is this quadratic greater than zero, it's looking for where is the parabola above the x-axis, which means it's going to be looking for these outside regions right here. And if you can identify those outside regions, then you're done. You just have to know these critical points. So the way we find those is by taking the quadratic, and I like to use a different colored pen so I know it's not the original, and I set this equal to zero to find those critical values. Okay, So off to the side, you want to factor this, and so let's just do that real quick. Okay, If I take 3x squared minus 17x plus 17, and I want to factor this. Might use the AC method. So the AC method would say do 3 times 10, which is 30. And then I want to find factors of 30 that will add to 17. And those factors just happen to be 2 and 15. And so I can use those to split up this middle term. So instead of saying minus 17x, I can say minus 2x and minus 15x. That's the same thing as saying minus 17x, but now I'm going to be in a position where I can factor by grouping. In the first group, the common factor here is x. If I factor that out, I'm left with 3x minus 2. The second group, watch out here. The second group begins with a minus, so a negative must be included in my common factor there. Common factor for 15x and 10 is 5. So you're going to factor out a negative 5, which makes this positive 3x minus 2. Since those factors are exactly the same, we end up with the factorization of 3x minus 2 times x minus 5. Alright, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and copy that up here so we know this factors as 3x minus 2 times x minus 5. Alright, so from here you get a critical value of x is equal to positive 2 thirds and you get another critical value of x is equal to positive 5. So in terms of the graph that you see in the upper right, um, as long as you put these in the correct order, it's going to be pretty simple. So let me just kind of redraw this over here. I have two critical values. In order, they are 2 thirds and 5. My original inequality wants to be greater than 0. So it means it wants the output, once you plug in an x, it wants it to be greater than 0. Which means we're looking for these outside pieces, because if I were to draw, do a little sketch of my parabola, it's going to look like this. And where's that parabola above the, uh, above the number line? Where's it above the x-axis? Well, it's above for all of these values that you'd plug in greater than 5, and it's also above for any of these values that happen to be on the left side of 2 thirds. 
Now since this says greater but not equal to, these guys are going to stay open. And this ends up being your solution set. Nothing inside here is going to work. If you were to plug in any number between two thirds and five, you plug it in here and it's gonna kick back a negative number. I don't want a negative though. I want something that's greater than zero. So the interval notation is from negative infinity to two thirds union from five to infinity. Now, just a little aside for you here, for those of you playing along at home, here's a what if for you. What if instead I had said 3x squared minus 17x plus 10 is less than zero. Well, if that's the case, I'm not looking for these outer pieces anymore. I'd be looking for this section in the middle. So if this were the case, then my solution set would have been from 2 thirds to 5. Because I'd be looking for where is that parabola below the x-axis, and it's below the x-axis for values between 2 thirds and 5. So as long as you have the critical values, these problems really aren't that bad. All right, let's look at another one. x squared plus 8x is less than or equal to negative 11. All right, again, think about uh, what you're looking for here. You've got a parabola, and you need to figure out if, it's, if you need to be above or below the x-axis. Okay, so one of the things you may consider doing here is to move the negative 11 to the other side first. And if you do that, that's x squared plus 8x plus 11 is less than or equal to 0. All right, so what this tells me is that I want this quadratic to be something that's less than or equal to 0. I'm looking for where it's going to be negative, which means I'm looking for the dip that it has where it's below the x-axis. So if I can figure out what those two critical values are, I'm going to be good to go. So now that we kind of have that in our mind, let's look at solving this as an equation. If I take x squared plus 8x is equal to negative 11. Now, if I move the 11 to the other side like I have here, you might try to factor it. However, you can't find factors of 11 that are going to add to 8. So factoring is out of the question. The next thing we would try would be completing the square. And this is good news for us because this is a 1 and that guy is even. And so if that's the case, completing the square really shouldn't be that bad. So know that when you complete the square, we're expecting there to be a square here. But we've got to figure out what goes inside. And this is where we kind of fill in the gaps like we've done before. Half of 8 goes in the factored form. So half of 8 is plus 4 and 4 squared is 16. See, so by having the 16 here, it allows the left side to factor as this binomial square. However, I can't just add 16 to one side of an equation. I have to add 16 to the other side to maintain balance. And so now we have 5 on the right side. So the reason we complete the square is so that we can use the square root property. All right, so let's do that. So take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. We get x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. That guy does not simplify. And then we move the 4 to the other side as a negative 4. These are my solutions to the quadratic equation. Let's see what that means for our uh, inequality. All right, so which one goes where? Well, here's the easy thing. Anytime you have solutions that are quadratic like this for a quadratic, or they're, they're a radical with a plus or minus for a quadratic inequality, the minus is gonna go on the left, so negative four minus the square root of five, and the plus option, negative four plus the square root of five, goes on the right side. That's really all there is to it. Negative is on the left, the plus one's on the right. 
And if you think about something that's that's quadratic, it's gonna come through here like this. Okay? We're looking for where are you going to be less than or equal to zero. So we said that's going to be that region that's less than where this guy's below. So it's going to be everything in between those critical values. And since it has the option of being equal to zero, these guys then get to be filled in. So we get to include both of those guys. So our interval notation is going to use brackets because we are including these guys. From negative four minus the square root of five to negative four plus the square root of five the bracket. So that's how we take care of those quadratic inequalities. Now, rational inequalities are pretty much the same thing, but sometimes we need a little bit of an extra, extra help for solving those guys. So let's take a look at one of those. So let's take a look at this rational inequality. Uh, x plus 9 times 5x minus 3 over x minus 1 is less than 0. Now, since we already have zero on one side of the inequality, this is really good for us. We just need to find all of those critical values. So the critical values are any replacements of the variable that make either the numerator or the denominator zero. And since everything is factored for us, we just set each of those factors equal to zero to find the values. Oops, oh, excuse me. So starting here, negative nine is a critical value. Here you would have to add 3 and divide 5, divide by 5 to get that uh, equal to 0, and this is going to be 1. All right. So what I like to do here, once I have multiple critical values for a shape that I really don't know what it looks like, I'm going to use a sign chart, a little sign table. And what that is, is that you take each of these factors and you consider the sign pattern for each of them. And then you just look at everything all together. So let's do this. So those are the individual ones, and then I'm gonna see what happens when I put everything together. All right. So I'm concerned with these three values. Now, negative 9 is going to be here on the left side. That's pretty simple. Between 3 fifths and 1, uh, 3 fifths is just a little bit less than 1. So it's going to look like this. And I take these numbers and I divide everything up into these different sections. Now, I don't really care about how big or small these positive or negative numbers are. I'm just trying to find numbers that are going to be less than 0. Okay. So. For x plus 9, this guy is going to be looking like this. It's a linear shape. It's a line. So it's going to come from negative values. It's going to hit the x-axis at its critical value, negative 9, and it's going to be positive the rest of the way. So x plus 9 has a critical value at negative 9. That's where we got the negative 9 from anyway. If you plug in anything to the left side of negative 9, you get a negative for this factor. Beyond that, you plug in anything in this region between these two numbers, you get something positive. And you get something positive here and positive here. And that's how most of these factors are going to go. If it's a linear factor, the positive coefficient is going to go negative. It's going to become zero at the critical value, and it's going to be positive the rest of the way. So take 5x minus 3. 3 fifths is his critical value, so I'm going to put a zero right here. Any value that you plug in that's to the left of this is going to cause 5x minus 3 to be a negative number. You plug in 0, you get negative 3. You plug in negative 9, you get negative 48. You get a negative number. Again, I don't care how big. It's just negative. But beyond this critical value, he gives you something that's positive in every other region going forward. Same thing here for x minus 1. He is 0 at the critical value of 1. He's going to be negative in every region leading up to that. He hits zero as he crosses that x-axis, and then he becomes positive the rest of the way. And then what we do is we say, okay, what's going on in each region? 
in this first region you have three negative factors which gives you something that's negative. Two negative factors gives you something positive. One negative factor is just one negative or is just a negative uh, result. Three positives gives you something that's positive. So this expression, I don't know what the shape looks like really, is going to be negative, then positive, then negative, then positive. Okay. But you've got to be careful about what happens at these critical values. Since this critical value came from the numerator, he's going to be 0, because 0 divided by whatever is 0. 3 over 5 also comes from the numerator, so he's going to give you something that is equal to 0. 1, though. See, 1 was a critical value that came from the denominator. And since it came from the denominator, that means that if you plugged in 1, you wouldn't get 0. Since it's in the denominator, you actually get something that's undefined. And that's very important. Undefined is not the same thing as 0. Now, for us in this problem, it really doesn't matter because this said less than 0. It didn't say anything about being equal to. Okay, So I want to be less than 0, which means I'm looking for those negative regions. I'm looking for this guy right here. And I'm looking for that guy. So when I translate that onto my number line, that's everything in that region that's to the left of negative 9, and everything in the region between 3 over 5 and 1. Again, I have open endpoints here because I'm not able to be equal to 0. So the interval notation is from negative infinity to negative 9 parentheses union, and then that's parentheses 3 over 5 to 1 parentheses. So that sign chart gives, gives us everything. It tells us how this graph would behave, how this expression behaves in terms of being positive or negative. Now, let's do another what if. Okay, So what if I have x plus 9 times 5x minus 3 all over x minus 1 and now I want this to be greater than or equal to 0. So if I do greater than or equal to 0 I'm looking for the regions where this guy is going to be positive or 0. And really the sign chart is still going to be the exact same thing. So if you're trying to figure out what happens here, okay, here's the number line, negative 9, 3 over 5, and 1. The signs are still going to go negative, it's going to be 0 there, positive, 0 at 3 fifths, negative, undefined, and then positive in this region. So if I want to be greater than or equal to 0, that means I've got to be positive, so that's going to be this guy and that, or equal to 0, which now includes this value and that one. So if I translate this down to the number line, everything in between negative 9 and 3 over 5, and everything to the right of 1. But since I can be equal to 0, that's now going to include negative 9, and it's going to include 3 over 5. But it won't include 1, because 1 would make the expression undefined. So undefined would never be included no matter what. So the interval notation for our solution set, if I change the inequality from the original, which was less than, to greater than or equal to here, we get from negative 9 to 3 over 5, the bracket, union, and then we pick back up again from 1 to infinity. Notice the use of parentheses on the 1 to show that we are not including that. So the sign chart that we have up here is the sign chart for that expression. Then it comes down to looking at the inequality to know what parts do I want. Do I want the negatives? Do I want the positives? Do I include the 0? Do I not? So once you are able to interpret that, it's very easy to get your solution sets, depending on what it's asking.